Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new repeat features in Adobe Illustrator 2021. Now they were actually introduced on Adobe Illustrator for iPad in October of last year but not on the desktop version which was a huge disappointment as these features have been missing for years. Now what can they do? Well on screen now you'll see some examples of the kind of thing we are going to be creating today. It's now easier than ever to repeat objects around a circle create grid patterns and create live mirrored designs. Now before we start you can download a free template file from the description below that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. And remember if you enjoy this content hit the like button and subscribe for more weekly design content. Okay let's head onto the computer now and take a look at how we use these features. Okay so here we are in our illustrator template file and we already have some objects set up that we're going to use to show you these features. So start Starting with this object on the left hand side, it's just a simple vector and one thing before we start, you can use these features with any vector designs or even live text as we'll show you in the last example. So there's absolutely nothing special about what we're using to create these designs. So with an object selected, I can simply go up to object, down to this new option that says repeat and we have three options to choose from. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the radial repeat option and as you can see, this is automatically generating a circle and our object that we had selected is automatically being repeated around that circle. So this is already so easy. So this is already so easy to get started with. Now there's a few handles and things to note here. The dot at the top of this circle denotes the size of the circle or how spaced out the objects are from the center of that circle. So if I click and drag on this, you can see this is going to get bigger and our objects are going to maintain their original size, but it's obviously going to space them out more the larger we make this. Now, if I hold Option or Alt, it's going to lock the rotation of those objects. So you can see, depending on where I move this, we can actually have them rotating around the circle and this can create a slightly more interesting look depending on what you're going for in your designs. And I can simply let go to confirm those changes. We have a larger bounding box around this and that's simply to scale the whole design. So if I click and drag on one of the corner handles, I don't need to hold shift, it's going to scale this proportionately, which is also very useful, but very easy to do that. I can also just click and drag on this to reposition it. I also have this double-ended arrow on the right-hand side. Now this denotes how many iterations of our original design are going to be featured within this circle. So if I drag this up the way, we're adding more iterations to the this circle. If I go back down it's going to do the opposite and we can just go back down to one if we wanted to. But again this is so so easy to use. Down in the bottom left or this would be at the bottom by default we have another double ended arrow although these ones are split. Now this is actually to denote how far around the circle we want our objects to repeat. So I'm going to up the number of iterations so we can see this a little bit more clearly. If I drag the right hand arrow around you can see it's actually going to remove the objects from the area that we are removing. So we don't have to have this going around the full circle, we can just select a specific portion of a circle and again this is so easy and intuitive to use. So what I'm going to do is press Command Z or Control Z a few times just to go back to kind of what we started with here. I'm going to make this slightly bigger and what we're wanting to create here is a wreath or a laurel type design and this is very easy to do with this feature. So I've made this slightly bigger. I'm going to add a few more iterations. I'm going to go back up to this and again holding option let's have these appearing as if they're following this round the circle rotating with the circle. We'll go slightly bigger and I'm just going to add more iterations so this is a little bit more filled up like so and now I can change this so that this is only featuring on one side of the circle. So let's bring this side round like so and we can do the same with the other handle. We'll bring this back so we'll go with something like that and all I'd really need to do from here is is duplicate this and reflect it on the other side, so very easy to do. Now before I do that, it's also worth noting that we can make live edits to any one of these objects and it's going to apply to the whole design. So I don't need to select on the original object, you wouldn't even know which one that is now. All I need to do is double click on any one of these, like so, we have it selected, we have our color properties over here. I could double click on the fill tile, let's make this darker for example, I'll click OK and that's applying to all of them. 
I could also do things like edit anchor points or rotate these further and that's also going to apply to all of these as well. So what I'm going to do is zoom into this, I'll grab my ellipse tool and I'm just going to create a small circle to appear between these and as you can see this is automatically applying throughout this radial repeat. One thing worth noting is that we have to be in this radial repeat group for this to work so make sure that you've double clicked into that before making these changes otherwise they will not be repeated like this. But that was so easy to do. All I need to do now is double click out of that group. We'll select this again, press Command C or Control C on a PC, then Command F or Control F on a PC and go over to my properties panel and I can just flip this and we now have our laurel design and that was so so easy to do. Now one other thing to note and this is the case with all of these repeat options. If I select one of these again we're still technically in our radial repeat editing view so we can still make adjustments I can add more iterations in like this if I wanted to but if you wanted to just expand that and be able to edit individual elements of this design now it's very easy to do that as well all I need to do is click and drag over these to select them go up to object down to expand make sure object and fill are checked and click OK and now as you can see we just have two groupings of objects if I double click into one of these I can select any one of these individually and make edits that way as well. So very, very simple to use. And I think this first feature already is going to be a huge game changer for a lot of people. Moving on to the next example though, this is potentially an even bigger one. Now creating patterns in previous versions of Illustrator, I think has been a real chore for many years. It's been very unintuitive to do and overly complicated for something that should be quite simple. But luckily with the new grid repeat feature this is so much easier to do. So we have a simple design here now this could be a logo mark for example this is something that a lot of companies are doing now taking their logo and creating patterns with elements from it and it's a great idea to use on things like packaging or merchandise. So we've got the simple design I'm going to go up to object down to repeat again and the second option down grid and similar to the radial repeat option we're getting an automatically generated design straight away. Now this one is so easy to use. Again, we have a few handles to look at here. On the right hand side, we have this rectangular handle. If I click and drag that out, we can simply extend this pattern out horizontally. Same with the bottom handle here, we can extend this vertically. So already very, very easy to specify an area to create this pattern. Now up at the top, we have a wee double ended arrow. This is the horizontal spacing. So if I click and drag this to the right, it's going to space out each of these objects more over to the left it's going to reduce the spacing and again this is the same with the left hand double ended arrow we can adjust the vertical spacing so down is going to space it out more or back towards the top is going to reduce the spacing so I'm just eyeballing this right now we can be very precise with this over in our properties panel we have a repeat options section so you can see we have the vertical and horizontal spacing here in precise pixel values so we can actually be very precise with this if we want to we also have grid type options so we can actually stagger the alignment of these so if I click the brick by row option this is going to offset every other row which can create a more organic looking pattern we can also do this by column as well so this is really cool we also have these flip options down below as well so we can create a little bit more variety with these by checking them so I'm just going to enable all of these and you can see the difference in the pattern being generated this is good if you want a little bit more variety within your pattern so let's just go back Back to what we had originally. Similar to the radial repeat option, we can also make live edits to the object being repeated here. So again, it doesn't matter which one we click on, but I can simply double click into any one of these objects and make changes this way. So this could be to anchor points. I could equally rotate this. So let's do that in this example. I'll hold shift to make sure this is locking to 45 degree angles. And again, let's double click out of here. We'll select it again. And it's so easy just to make changes to the spacing based on these changes we've made. I'm going to bring this up. I'll actually go over to my properties and we'll select the brick by row option and that's going to work better for this design. Let's space these out slightly more. But as you can see, this is so easy to do with these handles. I'll try and get the spacing as consistent as I can. It's not perfect, but it will certainly do for this example. Now, what I could also do is just grab my rectangle tool. Let's create a rectangle in behind this. I'm going to right click on this and go to arrange then send to back so 
so we'll put it in behind the design. I'm going to press I on my keyboard with it still selected to grab my eyedropper tool and I'm going to select this blue color. Now that's going to merge with our design here but all I'm going to do now is double click back on one of these objects. Let's change the fill color to white and that's going to apply to all of them and we'll take the opacity down to 20%. Hit enter and let's double click out of here and as you can see so so easy to create a subtle pattern with something like a, a simple logo mark in this example. Now obviously it doesn't have to be something so geometric like the example we have here. You can do this with very organic designs as well and you're still going to get great results with such ease as well. I think this is going to be one of the biggest new features of this update. Let's move on to our last example though and before I do that let's just scale this down slightly. We have some live text so as we mentioned at the start it doesn't just have to be traditional vector designs we can do this with live text as well. Now the font I'm using here is called Pantone Narrow Black Caps. I'll leave a link for that in the description below if you want to download this and use it as well. It's not a default system font, but equally you can substitute this for any font that you would like that you have on your system. So with it selected, I'm going to go up to Object, down to Repeat, and our last option here is Mirror. Now, pretty self-explanatory this one. It's automatically mirroring this text beyond this dotted line here. So this dotted line is our point of reflection. We have a small circle here and this denotes where that point of reflection is. If I move this away from our original text it's going to space our reflected objects away from each other or if I pull it back in we can bring them back in towards one another. One thing to note though is if I bring this right in and let go it is going to cut off any of the object that's going beyond that line. But still this is a really easy way of reflecting these objects and the best thing about it is that it will create live updates as well. So if I press T on my keyboard for my type tool, I could select this text and we could say reflect instead. And you can see that's automatically updating on the other side. Let's space these out a little bit more. Now, if I zoom right out here and pan up to the top, we have another handle right up at the top here. And this is to actually rotate the point of reflection. So it doesn't just have to be this vertical line. We can click and drag on this. And the reason it's so far up is because they need to allow a big enough area for reflecting objects. If it was really small, then it wouldn't work nearly as well. But I can simply click and drag on this. What's maybe even easier though is just using the properties panel again. So again we have this repeat options section and we can enter a precise angle here. So I'm going to double click into here and just type in zero and that's going to create a perfectly horizontal reflecting line. Let's zoom back in. I can adjust the spacing again. So we'll bring this right back up to our original text like so. And we can also add other elements to this. Again, making sure you're in this mirror repeat group. I could do things like grab my ellipse tool. What I'm going to do is just flip the fill and stroke. Let's create a different color here and we'll bump up the stroke weight. So I could start dragging out some circles and you can see they are automatically being reflected as well. I could equally grab my pencil tool. These are just rough examples of the kind of thing we can do and you can see how easy it is to create live mirrored designs like this. It's been a feature that's been missing for a long time. It was possible before but there was a lot of carry on in setting up groups that had transform effects on them and really it was a lot more work than it needed to be. But that will do for this design example. Again similar to the other options I can expand this if you wanted to make edits to individual elements elements on the reflected side, we would have to expand this. So let's double click out of the group. If I select it, you can see it's all being selected. I can move this around and scale it as well if I wanted to. But to expand this, again, I'm just going up to Object, Expand, make sure they're checked and click OK. Now one thing to note is when we expand this one, it automatically gets grouped and put in clipping masks. So what we need to do is right click and click Ungroup, or the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift Command G or Shift Control. Control G on a PC. So what I do is just hit that a few times to make sure everything's ungrouped and you can right click and also select release clipping mask. And the only other thing you'll have to do is delete these rectangles that get created for the clipping mask. Nothing's going to get deleted in terms of your actual objects. But now we can select these individual elements and make edits to them if we wanted to. We still have editable text here. So T on the keyboard, I can go and change that if I wanted to. What I'm going to do is just click and drag over the bottom elements and just take the opacity down to 
40% just to really reinforce that reflected look in this design. But that's it for an overview of the new repeat features in Adobe Illustrator 2021. As you can see, they are so easy and intuitive to use and I think they are really gonna help a lot of designers out with what they're creating. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and remember to subscribe for more weekly design content. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next one.